What's going on, everyone, and welcome in to the Locked On Reds podcast. Thank you so much for joining me here today and making me your first listen right here on Locked On Reds. Let's talk about Reds Pirates briefly. We'll we'll touch on that here later on in today's episode. I want to start off by talking about Joey Votto, though, and the opportunity he has with this series in Pittsburgh. And I'm going to take a couple of questions. I got a Locked On Reds line and a question from Twitter that I thought was really good. We're, we're going to cover all of that, talking about Joey Votto, and then also talking about locker room stuff, like locker room dynamics and and why it's important to have those guys. It's one of those things that's it's hard to talk about as fans because we don't we aren't privy to that information at least un- until it's reported on and i kind of want to tie it into the article in the athletic about the padres and what they're experiencing right now before we get into all of that though i wanted to let you know that today's episode of the lockdown reds podcast is brought to you by spotify green room spotify green room is changing the way that we talk sports and you can download the app today on your favorite mobile device and join a conversation about your favorite team that's the spotify green room app you are locked on reds your daily cincinnati reds podcast part of the locked on podcast network your team every day it is a good day. I, I got the chance to go to the Bengals game last night. The Bengals got a win. That's the all important thing. I don't care what the score was as long as the Bengals got the win. I'm a Cincinnati sports homer. What can I say? And the Reds now only have three games left. It's a La Piedra day, though. We're going to get to see Luis Castillo throw one more time on the mound for 2021. He's going up against Will Crow. We'll talk about that a little bit more and and kind of the big picture for these next three games to finish out the season for the Cincinnati Reds. But I want to start today with our man, Joey. Joey has had one hell of a season. Joey Votto has been hitting the ball out of the ballpark at a rate that we haven't seen. I mean, 2017 was amazing and 2010 was amazing, but this is his third best season so far as homers go. He's got an opportunity this weekend to tie or surpass, depending on how good it is and how much playing time he gets. But depending on all of that stuff, he has a chance to surpass his career home run mark. And I, I found this was interesting because Mark Sheldon asked him on a post game Zoom. This was actually after he hit two home runs against the Pirates at Great American a couple of days ago. And he was asked by Mark Sheldon what he thinks of the opportunity of surpassing his career mark when it comes to dingers. And we're going to try this. This is my first time. uh, Let's see. Yeah. um, Yeah. But, um, you know, I was fairly confident that I was going to hit some home runs this year. Um, I I, I had said in the past, you know, this was a skill set that I, I had that I you know, if you had asked me in my prime, you know, hitting 270 or 269 or whatever I'm hitting, if that was okay, I would have, you know, I would have not, I wouldn't have been happy with that. I wouldn't have been satisfied. I would have lost a lot of sleep over that. But, um, you know, now I'm taking more chances and with that comes more more outs. But, um, yeah, I was pretty confident I was going to hit quite a few, few homers this year. I'm glad that worked. It's good that the video clip got the chance to work there. So if you saw it on YouTube, uh, thank you, first of all, for watching on YouTube. Make sure that you're subscribed. And and just the great answer that he gave there, it's not as if he's really gunning for that mark and trying to set a career high record, but he knew it all along. And kind of like he said, like he could have focused on this earlier on in his career, but he wanted that high batting average. That is what he was going for. And if the power came along with it, then that's all well and good. Well, this year he kind of realized he's got to have one or the other and not necessarily one or the other to the point where he's hitting like a 220 clip and, you know, we're, we're worried about all the strikeouts, but he's hitting a ton of home runs. So, hey, we're happy with that. He has still been able to mesh a good plate discipline with power and the power that he has shown they mentioned it earlier on in that zoom with him, the 466 foot home run that he hit to right field was the longest that he personally hit in the stat cast era. So 2015 to now 
And they asked him, they said, have you ever hit anyone? Do you remember hitting one longer? And he said, oh, yeah, I, I hit one off the N on Cincinnati in between the power stacks. And he said, as I was rounding first, I put my hands up like I hit a field goal. You know, like he split the uprights. And he even went on to say, he's like, oh, man, that was before people were okay with that sort of thing. So I got told by some people like, hey, we like you, but uh, stop that. And so, you know, it's funny to see how his career has progressed to this point. But when he goes to Pittsburgh, if he hits three home runs, then he sets a new career high, which would be awesome because that'd be 40 home runs. But we're also talking about a Joey Votto that at the beginning of this season, in fact, I, I went back and I looked because I know I had this take in the offseason. I wasn't sure exactly when it was on a podcast from November 18th of last year. I advocated for the Reds to play him less. Now, I said play him about 120 to 122 games in some sort of platoon situation. The interesting part about that was he's going to end up, if he plays all three, he might only play two out of three. He might only play one out of three. Just depends on how they build the lineup out for the final three games of this year that, if we're being honest, only means pride. There's not much else that it means. But if he plays all three games, he will have played 129 games this year. Close to what I said. Now, part of that is he missed a month. But the other part of that is he is almost hitting 40 home runs, having missed a whole month of the season. I, I think that we understand the awesomeness of how many home runs he's hit, you know, as it is right now. But consider the fact that he's missing a whole bunch of games simply due to injury, not because they chose to sit him, not because they realized that he needed some breaks here and there. It's because of injury. What had happened if he would have played two thirds of that month? We'd be talking about 40, 45. Dare I say maybe he approaches 50. Okay, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself there. But this is how good the season has been from a power angle for Joey Votto. And I talked about it on a previous podcast last week, his isolated power, which is slugging percentage, and you just take away the batting average off of that. And what the difference is, it's trying to encapsulate how many extra base hits, the rate of extra base hits that he has is over 200. And which is phenomenal. You're talking about guys who are in MVP conversations have isolated powers that are around that or, or higher. And, and it's just been an amazing year. It's his best of his career so far as power marks go. And I would love to see it. I'd love to see him hit three home runs this weekend, hit the 40 home run mark, and set a new career high. Because we're talking about a guy... And going back to that November 18th podcast, I was talking about how we know who Joey Votto is after the last three years of struggle. We know that we're probably getting a guy who's only going to be okay. He's only going to be kind of helpful in the lineup. And I even doubled down on that in spring training. And I said, look, I have a bold prediction that he's going to have, an, I think I said 130 OPS plus or higher, which by the way, that's happening. But I also admitted that I felt like his best spot in the lineup was probably fifth because he wasn't one of the three best hitters in this lineup. That was wrong. Uh, the, 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 yeah, whatever. I'm so happy that it has been because he has been phenomenal this season and he's got a real shot at hitting that career mark. All right, coming up. I got a question about Joey Votto on the Lockdown Reds line that I find interesting. It's a what-if question, so that, that we're talking more about the watcher and, and, and not reality, but maybe an alternate timeline, maybe a what-if scenario when it comes to Joey Votto. That's coming up here in just a minute. Before I talk about that, though, i got to tell you one more time about Built Bar. I've told you about Built Bar a 100,000 million times, and if you haven't taken advantage of the promo code LOCK15, to save 15% off your next order at built.com. I don't know what you're waiting for. We're talking about the best tasting protein bar on the market, bar none, because it's made with 100% real chocolate. And it, it doesn't feel like you're eating some sort of health food thing. You know how sometimes you eat something that's healthy for you, but it has no taste and it feels like you just put a piece of cardboard in your mouth. Not so with Built Bar. Built Bar is going to make you feel like you just had a satisfying snack because of that 100% real chocolate make. Plus, they've got amazing flavors like Cherry Barcia, Coconut, Cookie Dough Crumble. Absolutely phenomenal stuff that will satisfy your sweet tooth. 
Check out Built Bar today at Built.com and use that promo code LOCK15 to find your next favorite flavor. You can get a mix box. You can get a uh, pick your three favorite flavors and get six of each flavor. Or you can get a whole box of just one flavor if you already know what your favorite flavor is. Go to Built.com, use that promo code LOCK15 and save 15% off your next order. All right, so we've been talking about Joey Votto. It's been an amazing season. He's got a chance to close it out with three home runs to get the 40. It's it's a tall task because you're asking, I mean, he's he's played so well this year, and to put any sort of pressure on, wow, you got a homer in the final three games, like one out of everything. I'm sure he's not approaching it that way, but he would love to end the season with 40 bombs. But I had a question, and this is from our pal Chad in Lancaster. He asked this, and again, this is a what-if scenario, maybe not totally far-fetched to the point that you can't imagine it happening in any universe, but maybe let's think of an alternate universe here for a second. What if Joey Votto went to ownership and said, I am tired of not making the playoffs. I want to sign Castellanos, spend money next year on upgrades, or trade me to a contender. What would ownership do? Does Joey Votto have much trade value? And I've looked at it and it's mostly due to his huge contract and the fact that he has a no trade clause, but according to baseballtradevalues.com, he has a negative trade value. So in order for the Reds to make a trade that includes Joey Votto, they themselves would also have to pony up somebody who has positive trade value. I don't necessarily know how, I mean, I know that a lot of front offices use that tool, use baseball trade values kind of as a baseline of understanding, not necessarily gospel in this case, but when you think about what his trade value might be, I'm sure there'd be plenty of teams interested, mostly American League teams, at least so far as right now with the designated hitter only being in the American League, because I think if he's traded, I don't know too many teams that would sign up for playing him at first base every day. Now, maybe in a platoon situation, but mostly play DH. Yeah, I could see that. But for the most part, you're going to look at a team that, sure, they want to contend right now. I don't think that you're getting a top 10 prospect for him. And and that is where you come into the whole idea of trading Joey Votto would be an absolute loss for the fan base. This would be something that the fan base would have to understand that Joey himself is done. He doesn't want to play as a red anymore. And then again, this is a what if scenario. This is not Joey Votto because I, from everything that I gather, listening to interviews and, and reading articles about Joey Votto, he is as happy as can be retiring as a Cincinnati red. He's going to be disappointed if he doesn't get that ring, but I don't, I don't think that he is a ring chaser. I don't think that he's going to be that guy that all of a sudden we see him playing for the Yankees or we see him playing for the Red Sox or he goes to L.A. and plays for the Dodgers or something like that simply because he wants to get that one ring because he has said in the past, and I, I forget, I, this was like a couple of years ago, somebody asked him about that possibility, about him wanting to go to a contending team if he feels the Reds are not there. And he said, look, a, a ring is nice, and it's something that he wants more than anything in the world. And I love the quote that he had because I remember this quote. He said that you know he wants to be on one of those teams like the 1990 team or the Big Red Machine when they come back to the ballpark and they celebrate a World Series win. He wants to be a part of that more than he wants any individual award that he can win. But he also says that he doesn't want to do that because he's happy here. He's He doesn't envision himself going and chasing a ring with another team. So the question is more from a what-if standpoint, but you could see a situation in, I, I think that we as fans have a much more jaded view of how the Reds are run than everyone in the organization. I, I think that there are some people that probably question what's going on, but for the most part, I think everybody's kind of going along with how it's working. So we as fans don't necessarily have the same pulse as the players do when it comes to how the team is being run. So when I look at Joey Votto and possibly being disgruntled, which is never a word that I think I would ever use for Joey Votto, but if he were to get there, and we're talking about his trade value, I think that trade would be a little bit hard to envision as to how it would work out because you would have to get a team that would either be willing to take on his contract and not trade very much to the Reds 
or the Reds would have to include probably some prospect or somebody like that to kind of sweeten the pot and get the deal done. It wouldn't be a good trade that we would look at and say, boy, the Reds really made good on this one. It's going to be a loss if that were to ever happen. And one other question, and I got to apologize because this was on Twitter and I couldn't find the tweet, but it was a good question because they were talking about, you know, in the off season, do the Reds prioritize getting locker room guys and, and, you know, where, where would they look at? Like, what kind of players would they look at to kind of fill that? Because obviously you want talent, but you also want cohesion. You want some sort of collaborative spirit in the locker room. And I understand that this isn't X's and O's. This isn't talking about statistics. This isn't strategy. This is locker room talk, right? No, not in the sense of what, what it's become to mean, but when you're talking about a locker room feel, you want a team that is on one page, like not guys trying to get their individual gains over the team or, okay, well, I'm going to hit 40 home runs. And if it helps the team, great, you know, something like that, that that's not a sense that I get from this red team. And a lot of that has to do with David Bell. A lot of that, I believe is why David Bell got that contract extension because he is very good at managing his players' egos, personalities, and getting them all to mesh. That's an important part of any professional coach or manager, but much more so in baseball because, for the most part, you kind of put them out on the field and you let them go. You're not calling certain plays, and you can call shifts and things like that, but the manager's main thing is to manage the egos on the team, manage the personalities on the team. And the reason that I'm saying all of this, and it's a great question from Twitter, And if you were the person that said that, please shout me out on Twitter and be like, hey, dummy, I'm the guy that asked this. Give me some credit here because it was a good question. Um, But when I look at this, the reason that this is so important, if you've seen the article in The Athletic, or I'm sure it's made its rounds to other news sites as well, the San Diego Padres are in disarray, which I I feel bad for my buddy Javi because he is a huge fan and he's a great host there at Lockdown Padres. But when it comes to this team, they they built – all this talent, and they acquired all these guys that made the Padres one of the favorites to make the playoffs. And they have collapsed even harder than the Reds. The Reds had a pretty bad collapse here in the month of September. There's no two ways about it. But the Padres made the Reds collapse look as if it was just some sort of, maybe you spilt some water or something. And then then the Padres came in and dumped the whole thing, like a two liter of soda, on top of the little cup of water you just spilt. Because the report in this was that the manager's out of his depth because he's an inexperienced guy and he doesn't really know how to manage all the egos on the team. You've seen the gifts and the memes of Manny Machado and Fernando Tati screaming at each other in the dugout, two of their biggest players. I mean, can you imagine for a moment if we ever had a game, and thankfully this isn't the case because they seem like very awesome teammates and they kind of like being around each other, but can you imagine just for a minute If there were a game where Nick Castellanos and Joey Votto were screaming at each other in the dugout, we'd be losing our minds. Cincinnati would just go insane. That's what's happening to San Diego. Manny Machado and Fernando Tati screaming at each other is a microcosm of everything in the dugout. The article that's in The Athletic is so detailed and really presents the entire picture so well as to the dysfunction of the locker room in San Diego. And it's kind of a cautionary tale. I I advocate for this all the time. I want the Reds to spend money. I want them to go out and get talent, bring in guys who can help them win. But there's also that caveat of they've got to work together. They've got to be able to come together and play as a team and like each other to some degree. I've talked about it in the past because Joey Votto was asked this in the offseason. And he's like, yeah, you know, I've had friends on teams. And, you know, there's guys who have been cool to be around, but I want to win. And at the end of the day, if you win, all that stuff just kind of follows. And sure, the Padres have lost a lot, but so have the Reds. Not hearing any sort of reports from the Reds that, oh, their locker room is dysfunctional and all this other stuff. You're hearing all kinds of stuff now about how the Padres are badly put together, basically. They've they've got a lot of talent, but it's a lot of individuals who are playing baseball under the same uniform and not necessarily as the same team. And that's why that's one of the things that it's hard to quantify. It's hard to really 
understand as fans because we're not privy to that side of baseball, but it is a super important part. And I'm glad that the Reds have been built the way they have been. So at least they can be cohesive as a team. And I'm sure that during this off season, why, you know, with all the checklists, we, we've got two points on the checklist of bring Castellanos back and improve the bullpen underlying all of these points is they've, they've all got to make sense. They've all got to be able to work together and the Reds seem to be okay in that department. All right, coming up, I want to talk a little bit about this series. I already talked about the, the thing that I'm really looking forward to, Joey Votto. I want to kind of break down a couple of other things, look at uh, Luis Castillo. He's got a chance to get under four. We talked about that on yesterday's podcast, so we won't go too in-depth today. But we'll talk about the Reds Pirates series briefly here for just a moment. Before I talk about that, though, I wanted to let you know that you can still take advantage of our offer at betonline.ag and set up your pro- profile with the promo code Locked On. You can make some money off your sports knowledge with the only online sports book that I trust. And trust me, I probably put a little bit too much money on a bunch of different things on that Bengals game last night, and it didn't come back. Bet online got to keep that because they were bad bets, so whatever. Uh, but you can make some money off your sports knowledge, whether it comes to the NFL or Major League Baseball. They got the NBA and the NHL getting ready to start up here pretty soon. The year is just flying by, man. But head on over to betonline.ag and enter that promo code locked on to get 100% more on your initial deposit. That's right. Buy one, get one free whenever you're loading up your profile at betonline.ag to start and use that promo code locked on. Speaking of promo codes helping you make money, download the Get Upside app today and use the promo code baseball to get up to 50 cents per gallon back on your first. Fill up. Get Upside is the app that you can use whenever you fill up your gas tank and uh, whenever you get to the pump and, and, and put some money in there. Um, <clears throat> boy, I got all tripped up there. Um, get Upside. Yes, you can save money on your fill ups at the gas pump by downloading the app. It's a free download, whether you're on uh, the App Store or Google Play. And you can enter the promo code baseball to get up to 25 cents more off your first gallon. There's a lot of people who are driving all around the country, whether it be for work or for pleasure that are making up to 200, maybe even $300 a month using get upside. That's that's cash back in their pocket just for using the get upside app. Download it today and enter the promo code baseball to get extra 25 cents per gallon off your first fill up by using the app get upside. Whew, rough ad reads aside, let's look at this final three games for the Cincinnati Reds as they head to Pittsburgh. Uh, l- let's be honest when it comes to the grand scheme of things. This is pride. This is adding to the win total. They have a shot. They, you know, if they sweep the series, then get to 85 wins, which would give them a tied for hang on for this because I was reading this earlier and I can't believe this. If they win three games, if they sweep the Pirates, it will tie them for the fourth best record this millennium. Yeah. Since 2000, they they had 85 wins in 2000. Obviously, they had 91 wins in 2010. They had 97 in 2012. And I think they had 90 in 2013. As of right now, they have the fifth best record of this millennium. It's been a tough road for a long time for the Cincinnati Reds team. And that is why everyone is so frustrated. We're, we're looking at a team that just hasn't won. Not Forget about even getting to the playoffs. They haven't had many winning seasons since the last time they advanced in the playoffs. Heck, we can even push it up since 2000. Since the year 2000, when they won 85 games that year, There's not been too much winning baseball here. It's been sad. So they've got that opportunity right now. They've got the fifth best record of the millennium uh, locked up uh, with 82 wins, which is sad to say they got that chance to tie that. Uh, You're looking at Luis Castillo with a chance to go under four with his ERA, where at one point in this year, it was over seven and a half. 
Uh, you're looking at some guys in the lineup. Jonathan India is still looking to kind of put a bow. I'm pretty sure that as of right now, they're engraving his name on the Rookie of the Year trophy for the National League, but he could put a bow on all of that with a nice series in Pittsburgh and looking at some pitchers who they could possibly do some damage against. Again, we've been saying that all year. Uh, so hopefully that can happen for him. Nick Castellanos has had one of the best seasons of his career. How much... And and the other thing that I look at with these guys, with the big guys, India, Castellanos, Vado, Suarez, how much do these guys play? Because there's a lot of guys that we're looking at. Who are we going to have on the roster next year? Guys like Max Schrock. As much as I love Max Schrock, I don't think that we should be penciling him into the roster next year. I, I love the idea of him on the roster as a bench player because he has shown some really good at bats. And he just has that, he, he's got kind of that heart, that beating heart of a gritty baseball player that you want to have on your team. I'd love to see that, but I don't know that that's a lock by any stretch. You've got TJ Friedel. What kind of role is he going to play for the Reds next year? He's got three games to prove it. I kind of hope he's at least playing in all three of them. He doesn't have to start all three of them, but as long as he gets into all three of these games, I think that should be a big goal. What kind of bullpen arms are we getting? Rivar San Martin is going to start the final game of the season. How is he going to look again? He, he has to pitch against the same team he just faced. So how are they going to adjust to that? And how is he going to adjust to their adjustments? Because that is what baseball is about. And we're talking about a long season. We always say that, long baseball season. So it's a season of adjustments. And for a pitcher especially, it is a career of adjustments. Does he make any adjustments or does he try to do the same stuff and get killed here in his second start? We'll, we'll see how all that goes. But when I'm watching these final three games of the year, I'm just going to watch it and be like, man, here in about two days, so like all, uh, October 5th, whenever everyone else is playing playoff baseball and the Reds are watching, I'm going to be sad. Going to miss some Reds baseball because – Having a birthday on October 3rd usually means, at least for most of my lifetime, it means, yep, the Reds are done playing baseball by this point. Maybe next year they won't. Who knows? We'll see. All right, that's going to do it for today's Lockdown Reds podcast. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. If this is your first time consuming the Lockdown Reds podcast, be uh, advised. It's free wherever you get your podcasts. I thank anybody who makes this their first listen of the day because, you know, we all need some red stock in our lives. Make sure that you're subscribed on the YouTube channel and you're following me on your favorite podcasting app. You can also follow me on Twitter at Jeff Carr with three Fs and you can follow the show at Locked on Reds. And we've got plenty of off-season content. So this really kind of wraps up the regular season portion of the podcast and we'll move into the off-season portion starting on Monday, uh, there'll be segments where I kind of like, will talk about what happens in the playoffs. I don't want to spend too much time on that, obviously, because we're talking about the Reds and there's lots to talk about when it comes to this off season and what needs to happen and what the Reds need to do to be competitive next year. Plus we've got player evals coming up. We're going to talk about everybody's season, going to break some guys down, look at what they did, what they could do next year. And you know, all that good stuff right here on the Locked on Reds podcast. Thanks again. I'll talk to each and every one of you tomorrow or Monday. Yeah. Tomorrow's Saturday. Yeah. Talk to you Monday.